kobolds. Plumbing the depths of what seems to be an abandoned dungeon in search of treasure, you turn a corner and come face to face with a small reptilian humanoid. You laugh at what appears to be such a weak foe and draw your blade. The creature turns and runs down the corridor and you give chase, soon tripping over something in the dark. You grumble to yourself as you begin to get to your feet, when suddenly a large pile of rocks tumbles from above, trapping you. You watch feebly as the small creature steps towards you, followed by twenty of his friends. These are kobolds, creatures that individually, in a fair fight, are no match for even the most novice of adventurers. Where they excel, however, and where they've gotten a fierce reputation, is in their numbers, their tactics, and their capabilities in setting traps. Compared to some species, they don't possess an excessive amount of lore, and are often just thrown at level 1 parties as fodder, but hopefully this video will give you a new appreciation for kobolds. Kobolds were first introduced in the original D&D set from 1974, partially inspired by kobold sprites of Germanic mythology. They weren't given much love originally though, lumped in as similar to goblins but weaker. They were expanded slightly in 1st edition AD&D, still similar to goblins with a hatred for sunlight and most other life forms. Kobolds would still not be in their typical reptilian form for 2nd edition AD&D, where they are described as cowardly and sadistic with a particular hatred for gnomes. Their capacity for trickery is mentioned though, with a penchant for trapping foes and throwing weapons or pouring flaming oil on them. Third edition is when kobolds would become the more recognizable form, short humanoid reptiles with small horns and a rat-like tail. They would go on to be in the basic monster manuals of 3.5, 4th, and 5th edition without much change. One of the most famous stories about kobolds is referred to as Tucker's Kobolds, a tale in which high-level characters are terrorized by particularly clever kobolds. An article was written for Dragon Magazine number 332 titled Ecology of the Kobold that I'll be drawing info from. Let's start with the basics then. Kobolds are small humanoids with reptilian features standing between 2 and 3 feet in height. Kobolds are physically very weak, but they are agile and possess excellent vision in the dark, making them well suited for cramped tunnels and dungeons. Kobolds, despite their diminutive size, share an affinity with dragons, and one of their primary creation myths involves them descending directly from Tiamat, the queen of evil dragons. They say that Tiamat was once injured by an army of thieves invading her lair, and while she was recovering amidst the crumbling ruin of her lair, she decided to prematurely hatch one of her eggs, spawning Kirtlemac. Kirtlemac knew he had to protect his mother, but lacked the strength of a full, proper dragon, so he set out creating hundreds of devious traps in the ruins around Tiamat. Kirtlemac would go on to spawn the first kobolds, teaching them his ways and becoming the primary deity of their race. Whether kobolds actually descend from dragons is debatable, but they do spawn from eggs and can live an exceptionally long time in comparison to similar creatures. Kobolds mature quickly, at around the age of 6, and while most of them will die shortly after due to violence, accidents, or disease, some kobolds have been known to live for over a century. Their subterranean lifestyle gives them a vast edge in underground situations, but bright lights can easily disorient them and cause them to scatter. Kobold society isn't complicated, as they aren't particularly smart creatures in most aspects. Their lives revolve primarily around survival, and the only reason they band together into tribes at all is because it gives them a better chance at survival. Kobolds mostly fall into one of several roles, trap makers, farmers, miners, animal handlers, and warriors. Trap makers, as the name suggests, are the designers of the countless traps that surround a kobold settlement, 
used for both protection against would-be plunderers as well as to catch food. Farmers cultivate plants for food, as well as more dangerous flora used to protect their home. Miners extract precious metals from the caverns around the home, as well as carve out new tunnels and chambers to expand the kobold lair. Animal handlers capture and train other creatures that are used as frontline defenses around a kobold lair to keep out adventurers. Finally, warriors are the kobolds specifically trained for combat and watch duty, although kobolds are naturally pretty cowardly, so they'll often flee more commonly than fight. In these situations, a kobold war party will have some weak and dim-witted kobolds on hand that the rest can encourage to hold the intruders off while the rest go and get reinforcements. These bumbling fools are often what adventurers encounter, giving kobolds a reputation as a weak and incompetent species. Watch duty is taken seriously though, and those caught in dereliction of this duty are generally put to execution, albeit a unique one. Kobold executions take the form of a public testing of newly designed traps. If the condemned criminal manages to survive three such traps, he gains the respect of the entire tribe, but, of course, that isn't a common result. Kobold tribes are typically led by the oldest and wisest of the tribe, usually one with some magical skill. Clerics of Kirtlemac additionally hold a great deal of power within a tribe, as traps and other constructions must be first blessed by a cleric before being put to use and a cleric will almost always accompany kobold warbands and raiding parties to ensure that Colonel Mac's favor is with them. Religion is important to the kobolds, but organized worship is rare, instead relegated to small prayers and obeisances throughout the day. Colonel Mac will often send an avatar to assist his people in particularly important battles or undertakings. Again, survival is paramount among their species, so life doesn't get too complicated, and they won't often seek out war. As for relationships, kobolds rarely mate for life, instead preferring a short-term bond between male and female, ending with the female laying a single egg. The process is quick, and female kobolds are capable of laying half a dozen eggs every year. This results in continuous growth of a kobold tribe, tempered by the typically short lifespan of most kobolds. Those that hatch around the same time are known as clutch mates, forming intense bonds of friendship and rivalry. Young kobolds are taught fundamental survival skills, ranging from rock throwing, digging holes, fleeing, hiding, and of course, trap making. Depending on the youth's aptitude for trap making, combat, sorcery, or other skills, they will likely be lumped into a single role for the remainder of their lives. Gender has no bearing in kobold society, both males and females are placed into any role based on their capabilities. At the end of the day though, kobolds are generally evil creatures, with little regard for any other species. They will mercilessly kill and eat anyone foolish enough to stumble into their lair, and they have a particular hatred for gnomes. The reason for this is due to the two species' primary deities and the feud between them. The story between Kirtle Mac and Garl Glittergold changes from time to time, but Kirtle Mac's hatred for Garl and the gnomes is passed down across all kobolds, so they will pull out all the stops to wipe out any gnomes they come across. Personally, kobolds are among my favorite of the lower level foes that a new adventuring party might be faced against. They are proof that one doesn't have to be the strongest, smartest, or fastest to take down a greater enemy than yourself. You just need some clever thinking and some teamwork. Granted, most of the time kobolds are treated with far less respect in games, where they are just thrown at a party as a simple combat, calling back to early editions of D&D &D where they were nothing more than weaker goblins. Perhaps though this will inspire some people to make kobolds a bit more unique, and a bit more troublesome.